Hello and welcome to our guide to easy to use maths opportunities and introductory level one in engineering. This small short training is just a little guide to teach maths by stealth for your level one learners. So we've got a very short agenda today. Uh, number one, we'll just be looking very quickly at what does maths, teaching maths by stealth mean. Uh, secondly, we're just going to be looking at uh, quickly an engineering maths quiz for your learners, which is available on the Pearson website. And thirdly, we're going to be looking at a guide to the maths opportunities in each engineering optional unit. So teaching maths by stuff, why would we want to do this? As we know, engaging learners at level one can be challenging and engaging maths at any level can be challenging. So trying to engage learners in maths and uh, at a level one can be even more challenging still. And there is a big importance of understanding maths at level one because it's a key skill that they're going to need to learn to understand uh, how to overcome challenges for really the rest of their lives. Now, very often uh, there is engaging learners at level one and with masters incorporate resistance and at the heart of resistance is a fear of failure. And at the heart of resistance, like we say, is fear. It's not stubbornness. It's not being headstrong, unbending or naughty, although it might feel like it. It's actually fear. And all sorts of fear drives resistance. There's a fear of not understanding. Um, there could be a fear of other people noticing that you don't understand. It could be a fear of ridicule, it could be a fear of failure, it could be a fear of not achieving, or it could be a mixture of one or all of these. So within teaching maths by stuff, what do we mean? Well, very often to, to try and sidestep the resistance, what we try to do is omit the M word. We try not to say that we are going to be teaching maths today. So what we try to do is to keep the maths simple and to teach the maths via practical subject specific activities. And sometimes it's useful as well to outline to your learners what can happen in engineering calculations are incorrect. What does happen if you measure incorrectly? What might happen if you get the size wrong? What could happen if you get costs wrong, etc.? And it's really useful as well if we're doing maths by stuff just to congratulate your learners after a maths activity, just to say, well done, you actually did a maths activity there and you did it very well. So an engineering maths quiz, we have an engineering maths quiz on um, the Pearson website. There are nine questions with maths base uh, relating to engineering. And uh, we actually think it's worthwhile discussing some of uh, these as a group. We could do one each week and it's just something sometimes to, to end up a little teaching and learning session. Uh, so, for instance, just one of the uh, questions we've got in the quiz is, your college is buying drill gauges. A single gauge costs £2.75 plus VAT. VAT is 20%. How much would it cost to buy five drill gauges? Now, I'm not going to tell you the answer because that's something you're going to work out and do with your learners. Uh, but as you can see, it's not a difficult question, but it's a question which is going to be valid to them for, for later life, which is about calculating VAT and how to buy uh, multiple things. So finally now we're going to look at the level one engineering units and this is just an easy to use guide for you to locate simple maths opportunities for engineering optional units. Now each unit has 40 guided learning hours. This includes teaching and learning time at the beginning of the delivery which is separate to assessment time which is at the end of the delivery of the unit. So please use your teaching and learning time wisely. Uh, it's really useful to find out the strengths and weaknesses of your learners in relation to maths in this teaching and learning time and really try to make some maths fun, have some group projects and some group questions in engineering. And again, it's quite fun really to say, well, what might have happened if you got that costing wrong? What might have happened if you got that timing wrong? And just throw out some what if activities. So common math themes in engineering, as you most likely know, we've got measurements, we've got costume, costings, we've got time scales, we've got deadlines, we've got ratios, we've also got tolerance limits. And now we're going to look at how each of the optional units in engineering can incorporate some subtle forms of maths in more detail. Now, these are just possibilities, and once you know what to look for, then you will certainly find some more. 
So let's look at ENG5. It's manufacturing and engineered product using hand tools. So within this, we're often going to look at whole numbers and negative numbers, and we could be looking at extracting and using information from tables, drawings, diagrams, charts and graphs, etc. All nice maths. Uh, we could be looking at shapings, we could be looking at bends and folds, we could be looking at marking out tools, we could be looking at marking fluid and engineers rules, scribers, scribing blocks, protractors, dividers, all sorts of things here where we're actually using maths. Uh, we could be looking at cutting tools uh, and cutting tools uh, do involve a calculation of where to cut. So it could be here for, I think, I think is it a uh, measure twice, cut once, I think is, is, is the optimum, but uh, it could be the other, the other way as well. So what if you don't measure twice? What if you do get it wrong and you've used your cutting tool? It could be preparing fluids for marking out. It could be uh, how much fluid do you use? Is there a ratio? We could be looking at marking out. This could be um, cutting guidelines, center lines, hole positions, profiles cutting and shaping, um, all sorts of things here which are useful for maths calculations and which do inherently just use maths calculations. So ENG6, so manufacturing a component using machining processes. And again, we're solving problems here requiring calculations. We're going to be looking at key features of engineering drawings. We're going to be looking at dimensions and tolerances. So straight away, we're seeing some maths opportunities. Uh, we're going to be looking at common symbols, abbreviations, could involve a radius, a diameter, uh, et cetera, et cetera, radius diameters, all really nice maths opportunities. Marking out processes uh, to include use of engineers, glue, calipers, scribers, centre punch, steel rule. And when you're marking out processes, you have to calculate correctly. Accurate measurement using appropriate equipment, steel ruler, calipers, protractor, micrometer, uh, height gauge, surface face, etc. And a completion of inspection record forms to manage information. And here we could be looking at checklists and recording of tolerance limits. So all really interesting maths opportunities here. Now, ENG7, we're going to be using, looking at using a welding process to join materials. There are perhaps limited maths opportunities here, but we still could be using um, addition, subtraction for numbers using a range of strategies. We could be looking at how big the two sets of materials are. We could be looking at how much welding, uh, bead, how much welding stuff you're using. We could also be using the size of the welding beads. How long do they need to be? What is the option? to them size, what happens if you use too much, what happens if you use too little. ENG8 is about assembling electronic circuits. Again, we could be looking at add, subtracting, multiplying, division. Uh, we could be looking at a resistor color code table to determine num numerical values from resistor colors and vice versa. We could be looking at systematic sequences of assembly. So we might be looking at a diagram or physical example. We could be looking at voltage. Uh, you could be explaining the use of color resistor codes. And uh, you could also begin resistors with a range of different values and use the information provided to determine the value of these resistors. Lots of opportunities here for using mass within electronic circuits. And I'm sure you can think of some more there. Uh, ENG9, this is carrying out routine mechanical servicing of equipment. Uh, again, lots of opportunities here. We could be looking at the time management of jobs to do. We could be looking at the cost of the parts. We could be looking at where you get those parts from. Is it more cost effective to get parts from places than others? We could be looking at the costs of labour. We could be looking at how much it's going to cost uh, per hour and how much that time is going to take. And we could be looking at the learners carrying out a, a routine mechanical service on equipment, followers a given plan accurately and returns equipment to the service within the prescribed time scale. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunities there. We could also be looking at calendars here, couldn't we carry out routine um, service of equipment? How much could you do within a day? How many could you do within a week? How much is it going to cost you to do it? And how much might you be earning for doing that? So ENG10 is now carrying out an electrical installation. 
Uh, we've got all sorts of uh, opportunities here again. Uh, so just a, a little potted version, we could be looking at circuit diagrams, line, line diagrams and layouts for all sorts of things involving multiple point radio for radio film installation, et cetera, et cetera. We could be marking out the positions of equipment and cable runs, and this would also be looking at distances, which is a nice uh, maths opportunity. And we could be looking at, at laying the correct type and size of cable to the required uh, shape and cut to length without causing damage. So we've got lengths here. And we've also got cabling sizes. So a few maths opportunities there as well. Some of these opportunities can be really simple, but it's actually a really good starting point sometimes to make these maths opportunities simple. ENG11, we're looking at producing engineering drawings using CAD. So we could be using A3 template or A4 template. We could be looking at different sizes of paper here. We could be looking at including drawing numbers. We could be looking at symbols, scales, units, general tolerances, all sorts of here things, uh, opportunities here for maths. Uh, we could be looking at the creation of engineering drawings. This would mean appropriate scale and dimensioning and center lines. Uh, we could be looking at uh, engineered products and components about drill gauges, uh, different size drill holes, sets of threaded holes in an appropriate order, all sorts of different areas here. We could be asking the learners to create an accurate template with appropriate information about the drawing. This could include units, dates, borders, scales, drawing numbers, general tolerances, etc. And we could be looking at the parameters of a CAD package. We could be looking at what is the drawing size, looking at the grid and the use of folders and saving, all of which are nice little maths opportunities. Now for ENG12, we're looking at carrying out routine service tasks on a motor vehicle. Uh, we're going back here to, I think, the number of jobs and time allotted for whole tasks. Really important to know how much you've got to do and how much time you want to take to do it. We could here be looking at measuring fluids. We could be looking at oils, etc. how much to put in. Uh, nice little opportunity here, which we haven't mentioned so far, an airline and tyre inflator. We're looking at tyre pressure gauges. What, what should the... Um, a correct tyre pressure B for different types of vehicles. We could be looking at tyre tread depth gauge. We could be looking at mileage. We could be looking at cost of new bulbs and cost of the labour to install the bulbs. Uh, often, sometimes the labour costs more to install, the, to install it than the actual cost of the bulbs. We could be looking at the replacement of parts used. We could be looking at type and grade of any replacement fluids. We could be looking at vehicle registration numbers, manufacturer, model, year of manufacture in order to locate those replacement parts used. And if there's some place uh, which might be more cost effective to use than others. So I think we've looked at uh, lots of different opportunities there, and I'm sure you'll be able to look for other maths opportunities in your assessment planning, as we've just given that as a guide for you. And it's really useful in uh, maths at level one to make learners show their process so that you can see where they might be going wrong. They can just give you a step by step of how they calculated, then you can see where it might be that uh, they might have been going in the right uh, um, stages, but then sometimes it's got one little bit wrong, it's made the final calculation incorrect. And help the learners to enjoy the maths. As we've seen, there were some really simple opportunities there. There are some more uh, advanced ones, perhaps. But if you start with the simple ones and work up, then hopefully they'll get a little bit more confidence in um, approaching those um, more complicated maths opportunities. And it's again, I think we've said this before, but help learners to see the useful of maths. What happens if you don't calculate the right way? What happens if you are budgeting and you've got the incorrect invoices for the job what happens if you've measured incorrectly etc what what could possibly go wrong so thank you very much for listening to this bite-sized training and just to let you know we do have a range of materials and support for introductory level one on the website this year we've got some video guides to maths for all of the subject pathways at level one we've got a video guide to engaging learners at level one We've got a guide to writing um, assignment briefs. Uh, we've got exemplar assignment briefs for all of the core units. 
We've got sample marked learner work for the core units for all grades at Pass Merit and Distinction available now. And we've got a range of Pearson approved templates for writing assignment briefs, for writing assessment feedback, and for the full um, internal verification process at your centre if you require them. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best with your maths opportunities within engineering. <laughs>